esteemed chairpersons and esteemed colleagues and the thousands of audience who have joined for this phenomenal DACON meeting. Dear friends, I'm extremely grateful for being asked to deliver this inaugural keynote, keynote address, the beginning keynote address, and I have chosen a topic, 100 lessons from 100 years of insulin discovery. Dear friends, I will just describe the lessons and I'm sure you will like it. It's a presentation with a difference. I will not be able to describe the entire 100 today. I have asked time to once for tomorrow, day after tomorrow. Today, I'll go up to about 25 minutes, by which time I have to stop. The lesson one was the Paul Langer hands and the pancreas. The photograph is here. Dear friends, a very pivotal event occurred in 1869 when a young German medical student by the name Paul Langer hands discovered the clusters of cells in the pancreas. These cells would go on later to be named after him as the eyelids of Langer hands. And dear friends, can you imagine what was his age by the time he discovered? that can be given each individual case customized while keeping the urine clear because you know that time there's no blood sugar estimation it was only urine and the clear urine indicated that diet is effective so the effort was to keep the person of diabetics with diet to keep the urine clear not becoming not reflecting the sugar keep the urine clear but it was one of very important scientist who said and no less a person my dear friends Ilya Jaslin he said in the lesson four diet was not all despite such strict diet approach therapeutic success was measured only in months of life the patient cannot live long only by starvation and diet restriction we need something else we need medication this was noted from a quote by Iliad Justlin. Justly says, quote, I quote, since diabetes is always from the agony, why not let the poor child eat as much as he wants? Be happy while he lasts for a few days. Because Iliad Justlin later on again went on to stay, we have to prolong life by the starvation diet, strict dieting, because the cure may be in the hand, at hand within one year. See the prophetic, prophetic, prophetic expression of Ilya Jaslin. Let the child fast, let the child be in agony, but let the life be prolonged. We do not know the discovery of insulin is around the corner. It might come tomorrow. That was the expression of Ilya Jaslin from the Jaslin Diabetes Center fame. Role num lesson number five was the role of pancreatic extract. Dear friends, it was very, very prophetic. Just listen to this. In 1915, insulin discovered in 1921-22. In 1915, an American researcher called Israel Kleiner showed that pancreatic extracts load glucose in a pancreatic animal that is pancreatectomized dog. So he showed for the first time that Kleiner showed that if you take out the pancreas, then the 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 then they showed that. And, 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 and you give this pancreatic extract to the person who does not have the dog who doesn't have pancreas, you can lower the blood glucose. But he could not pursue his work because there was transfer. He moved to another university in 1999. And in that university, Kleiner, see the fate, did not have the appropriate animal facility. So, dear friends, it's very important to work in a place where you have research facility. The role of pancreatic extras dawned upon Kleiner, but he had no, no way, no animal facility to pursue his research interest. Similarly, not only Kleiner, there was Romanian physiologist whose name is very famous. He's called Nikolai Polesco. He showed that pancreatic extracts load the glucose in the pancreatic animal. The pancreatic extract does work and lowers it Therefore, lesson number six, even though Israel Kleiner and Nikolai Polesko showed that pancreatic extracts load glucose in pancreatectomized animals, as early as 1916, the discovery had to wait for a few more years. You know why? 
there was no connectivity between the institutes that time they could not approach anybody how to purify this extract what did what Kolib did for the discovery so the days of no connectivity no appropriate approach to talk to others connect to others did not allow them to reach the end of the research lesson number seven my dear friends i called i have called it eureka moment dear friends every day my younger friends every day keep aside some time for thinking it is an idea which can change the world early in the morning of october benting was preparing for a lesson on carbohydrate metabolism for the physiology students he was teaching in the toronto university he has prepared a lecture for the undergraduate students <coughs> physiology students regarding the uh, the the carbohydrate metabolism Panting awoke from the slip after he had prepared for the class and wrote down the following on this idea i again repeat this idea in lesson number seven change the world scenario he wrote in that piece of paper i have his handwriting in photograph it is not coming out clear i'm showing what he wrote he wrote i i i quote like it pancreatic ducts of a dog keep dog alive till sni in the pancreas degenerate leaving behind the islet try to isolate the internal secretion of these to relieve glycosuria so you would extract the secretion of the islets and then see whether this secretion of the islet can relieve glycosuria that was the idea dawned upon banting which produced scenario and that happened in october and the discovery came in january dear 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 friends this is a very important lesson in science lesson number eight in science when you can you share when you can you share the science develops by sharing i must tell you i mean i'm, I'm just talking to my audience i have found these qualities there with, with with our president of the diacon and rssti bansi bhai shares everything with his fellow colleagues now what happened Banting this time met a professor J. J. R. MacLeod. He was from the Aberdeen, you know, Aberdeen is in England, Aberdeen University. He was the head of physiology and he was he was holding a chair, a named chair, named after a very famous physiologist. From the Aberdeen, MacLeod moved to Toronto and was a very highly respected expert on the carbohydrate metabolism. Banting offered to implement his ideas regarding the ligation of pancreatic duct in the MacLeod lab you have to share your thought with the or the people if you keep it to yourself thinking that somebody will steal it away you will not but appropriate person you share the idea although skeptical you know MacLeod, oh what this surgeon binding was an orthopedic surgeon he said what the surgeon is telling you is a bit spectacle but what he did he accepted this offer <clears throat> and willing to give him a chance Okay, I'll give some space to this orthopedic surgeon banting in my lab. And he it was called a dingy lab. It's very small dingy lab, not very lighted. Because he knew that banting has expertise as a surgeon. <coughs> so he will be able to do the pancreatic duct ligation. He will be able to see that the SNI degenerate. He will be able to see the islet secretion is isolated. In May 21, Benting and MacLeod began these experimentations. Lesson number nine, the role of teamwork is crucial. But Benting and MacLeod, a surgeon with a brilliant idea, a person with a lot of lab space was not enough. They needed the help to measure glucose level. And hence they recruited this young boy whose photograph you're seeing here, Charles Best. He was a recent graduate of the fourth year physiology and he was chosen to work dear friends i have not put it here but you know how he was chosen two students of physiology applied for this position in the benting and MacLeod's lab to measure the blood glucose they were biochemistry physiology student they knew how to but it was by toss and the toss charles best own and he was given the place and lo and behold he got the nobel prize dear friends whatever you do you must scientifically communicate 
the blood sugar as the fifth vital sign, many people thought it was Bansibai and his colleagues who took it to 1 million plus people. So you must communicate scientific research, scientific ideas, scientific papers, scientific news must be communicated. This dog experiments continued throughout the summer of 1921. You know, May month started, so entire summer it continued. And in November, apparently still ignorant of similar work done elsewhere, a case series of dogs successfully treated with the pancreatic extra. You know, previously Nicholas had treated, previously Kleiner had treated, but it was it was the MacLeod and Banting who first presented few dogs whose <coughs> were treated with the pancreatic extract and he submitted this to the journal of laboratory and clinical medicine in november 1921 so the person who communicates first who writes first who gives the news to the world first is the one who gets recognized dear friend animal research played an important role please remember i mean i am not casting as person on any politician please excuse me but i must tell you it is hard to imagine what would have happened if research and dogs had been prohibited that time insulin might not have been developed at all or at least it would have taken one decade longer how many people have died in one decade i think we can safely say that animal research saved many many lives lesson number 11 i want to say it loud and clear from the top of my voice benting hypothesized that it may be easier to prepare the extract from a fetal calf pancreas before its development of exocrine pancreatic cells. Benting and Best retrieved and processed several fetal fat pancreata from a slaughterhouse and successfully tested their extract on a diabetic dog. After finding that their extract was soluble in alcohol <coughs> and could be isolated from readily available adult bovine pancreas, they began a longevity study on a dog. You know who was what was the dog's name? Dog was called Great Marjorie. Marjorie. And with this extract, she ultimately survived 17 days. See the photograph of Marjorie with, with, with Banting and Best. Lesson number 12. They found, nevertheless, crude extract have less efficacy and prone to immune reaction. You know, many people were given the that extract subsequently, not that time, they developed skin infection, they leveled up autoimmune reactions, they leveled up ulcerations. On January 11, 1922, Leonard Thompson, a 13 year old boy with a two year history of type one diabetes was, in, was injected with Banting and best pancreatic extract. You know what it was called from the pages of history? It was called MacLeod serum. He was injected while an inpatient at while uh, while the while the Leonard Thompson was an inpatient at the Toronto General Hospital. Unfortunately, it caused local abscess. You know why I told you it was not pure; it was impure at the injection site of Leonard Thompson, and did not clearly lower the blood glucose. The condition of Leonard Thompson, he, he became infected. They could not see the lowering of the blood glucose then started the process of purification lesson 13. so dear friends the important lesson in insulin is the step of purification many many people have tried to produce insulin the rate limiting step the more, most important step in the insulin discovery is the purification james Cullip, a biochemist went on to purify the extract and leonard thompson experienced complete resolution of glucosuria and ketonuria for two days dear friends the basic scientists hold the key james collip a biochemist went on to purify the extracts and leonard thompson experienced complete resolution of glycosuria and ketonuria for two days and you see james collip photograph lesson 14 the extract was named insulin a paper describing the first seven patients successfully treated with the extract was published in the Canadian Medical Association, like our IMA journal, in the Canadian Medical Association journal in the March 1922. On the 3rd May 1922, exactly after two months, this extract was referred to as insulin for the first time 
on the 3rd May 1922, once we must also celebrate this day. It was called insulin that day for the first time by MacLear. While speaking at a major conference in Washington, D.C., it was MacLear for the first time who spoke about this serum, MacLear serum, and referred to this substance as insulin on this fateful day, 3rd May 1922. And the insulin was first prescribed, first manufactured by the Lilly lab. And no, this is presented here. But dear friend, the lesson is that scientists must have the act of kindness. You know what Panting, Best, and Colip and MacLear said? Insulin belongs to the whole world, not to me, Panting, not to me, Best, not to me, Colip, not to me, MacLear. He said, insulin belongs to humanity. So the entire patent right of the insulin they gave to Toronto General Hospital and University for three Canadian dollars, not American, half of that, three Canadian dollars. That is why insulin became affordable, became affordable. Lesson 16, you know, whatever you do, the, the Toronto General Hospital had that Connors lab, but Connors lab capacity to produce insulin was limited. The rapidly growing demand for therapy and the clinical testing, it could not meet. George Klaus, the first director of research at L.I. Lilly, signed a one-year agreement with the University of Toronto that allowed Connaught and the L.I. Lilly together to collaborate on developing methods of large-scale insulin production. This facilitated Connaught's lab's ability to supply all of the insulin required for Canadian needs and allowed L.I. Lilly to become the first company to manufacture insulin for the U.S. Dear friends, I will stop up to the 17 and I will request to come back for the other part of the talk, two other parts, whenever one by gives time, the road map to Nobel Prize. You know, Nobel Prize, it is a fateful Nobel Prize that it was discovered in 21-22 and Nobel Prize was announced in 1923. No other molecule in the world has been awarded Nobel Prize, no other discovery within such a short time. It was August Krog. He was a Danish physician. He was himself a recipient Nobel Prize. He visited US in 1922 and Canada. He was accompanied by his wife and the, his wife had, uh, had uh, been diagnosed as diabetes by the Hans Hagedon, that famous Hagedon uh, laboratory. He was by Hans Hagedon. His wife was diagnosed to be diabetic. Upon hearing the discovery of insulin for diabetes earlier that year, Mary, the wife of August Krog, convinced her husband to contact MacLeod and offer to our Toronto to his tour. He was on lecture to, to America. So his wife said, my dear husband, please write to MacLeod that you must go to Toronto to give a talk. He was a very, he's a Nobel director. August Krog was a Nobel director. And you give this talk in the Toronto and meet MacLeod because this will save my life. I think we do not listen to our wives, but August Krog listened to his wife. During this visit, Dr. Krog went to Toronto, met Banting and the rest of the insulin team, including MacLeod, and secured the rights to produce insulin in Denmark for Scandinavian countries. This initiative led to the founding <coughs> of the Nordisk laboratories. Following that, Novo and Nordis merged together as one single company. This also led Professor Krog to spearhead the campaign to nominate the work of Banting and MacLear pertaining to the discovery of insulin for the Nobel Prize in Physiology in Medicine. Dear friends, you need good friends in good place. You need good advocates to talk about your work. And August Krog did that for the work of the Banting and MacLear. Of course, subsequently of the of the MacLear uh, of the of the of the best and Colip, and said that this discovery of insulin is a path-breaking discovery, and Nobel Prize in the medicine must be given to them. And lo and behold, on October 25th, 1923, the Nobel Prize was awarded in the beginning to Benting and MacLear, but ultimately it was shared to this fabulous four. Benting shared his prize with the best and he was given world prize also 
and 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 Matlier shared his prize with Colip, who discovered the purifica purified form of the insulin which was used. So, dear friends, this fabulous four are responsible for the discovery of insulin. Dear friends, thank you very much for the patient hearing. I must stop here because I have taken my the time allotted to me. I don't want to exceed. I invite you to come back and uh, Dr. Bansi Shabu will intimate when you the next part of the talk. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed speaking to you this afternoon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.